Hello, welcome to another video from our channel. Here we translate testimonies of people who have had near-death experiences. Today, we will learn the story of David Wallace. He recounts that he found his best friend and his deceased ancestors in heaven. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe now. Turn on the notification bell to be alerted with each new video. Now, let's listen to David's testimony. My name is David Wallace, and I am originally from the island where I was born and raised, Malachi. I am 70 years old and retired. My academic background includes an advanced degree in psychology and public administration. Currently, I work as an author and editor, primarily writing nonfiction. My writings explore my experiences in a spiritual realm, highlighting four near-death experiences and the lessons I've derived from them. Additionally, I am also a spiritual healer, assisting people facing issues in their homes or relationships due to spiritual interferences, which can manifest through spirits or energies trapped in residences or drawn to individuals. Though I am retired, this is yet another second career for me. As for my beliefs, I grew up in a Hawaiian community, and my ancestors, parents, and grandparents were deeply spiritual and religious. However, after my first near-death experience at the age of five, significant changes occurred in my life. The first of these was my ability to see and communicate with spirits, as well as sense energy around me. If someone tried to hide something from me, I could somehow perceive it. Later, I developed a second sight and discovered that my ancestors, both on the Hawaiian and Celtic sides, were spiritually gifted individuals, including shamans, prophets, and seers capable of glimpsing the future. Many of the abilities I exhibited were an intrinsic part of our family tradition, with roots dating back centuries. My life took a critical turn when I was 20 years old and traveled to the United States mainland. I was in Chicago during a severe January winter, where I stayed for two weeks. During that time, I contracted double pneumonia. When I returned home, I was seriously ill and believed I might not survive. I remember telling my wife at the time that I wasn't sure I would overcome the illness. She thought I was delirious at the time, but I felt like I was on the brink of death. It was in that critical state, with a high fever and a sense of despair, that I anticipated an impending near-death experience. Perhaps surprisingly, I wasn't afraid, on the contrary, death seemed like a comforting idea, a final opportunity for rest after an early life filled with challenges. Death, at that initial stage, didn't frighten me. Well, something stood out in my perspective. I don't fear death because it's just a continuation of, you know, who I am. I'll never experience the end. Yes, well, I was lying in my bed, asleep. The first sensation I had was someone pulling my toe. This person was right at the foot of my bed. Someone pulled my toe, and I woke up from my sleep. I looked at the foot of my bed, wondering who that figure was. I sat up and observed. At the foot of my bed was a close friend of mine. However, as I jumped out of bed to hug him, I realized that this friend had been dead for several months. Come, he said to me after waking me up. As I realized he was dead and looked back at my bed, I saw my own body lying there. I began to cry, thinking that my time had come. He lifted me up, and then he started laughing. He said, come, I'll show you something. Then, he invited me to accompany him for a brief period. Immediately, my friend passed through the bed. Next to it was a wardrobe. He opened the wardrobe door, moved the clothes aside, and revealed a hole in the bottom, large enough for me to stoop down and pass through. I looked at the hole and saw a small light at the end. He said, I'm here to show you this. Do you want to see it? Part of me resisted, saying no, but my curiosity prevailed. He took my hand and pulled me into the hole. 
We began to walk through it, and as I entered, the cave opened up before us, allowing him to stand. As I looked up, the cave walls seemed to pulse, like veins of a living organism, but they were made of shrubs. The ground beneath our feet was soft and malleable. We continued to traverse the cave, encountering various twists and turns, and as we approached the light at the end, our clothing began to change. I found myself wearing dark attire in that realm. The garments felt as light as feathers, and when my hands touched them, the fabric came to life, tingling with energy and behaving like feathers. It almost seemed like I was wearing a bird's plumage. We continued to walk through a dark corridor that resembled a tunnel until we reached a transition point, a kind of membrane. On the other side, I glimpsed a completely new world. Intense light shone to the south of the membrane, and within it, I saw vibrant colors, absolutely green meadows and a dazzling blue sky. It was a vision of pure beauty. Being enveloped by that light, an overwhelming sense of love and warmth washed over me. I felt completely loved and as if I were exactly where I was meant to be. My friend was by my side, and we began to converse about various topics. So, something surprising happened. A long line of people began approaching the membrane. As they got closer, I recognized many of them as my ancestors and relatives who had passed away. They called me by name, seeking my attention, and the landscape soon became filled with their presence. However, what shocked me the most at that moment was that, in addition to my ancestors, a series of creatures came running from the trees towards the membrane and then towards me. They were all my childhood pets, my beloved animals, my loyal companions, all of them approached and jumped at the membrane, trying to reach me. I called them by their names, and they responded by wagging their tails, full of joy. They wanted to be with me, and there I was, sitting with tears in my eyes, trying to reach them through the membrane. However, they were on the other side, and it didn't make sense because we love our ancestors, but we also have a deep love for our pets. They shouldn't be there, waiting for us in heaven. This was the most impactful revelation for me. After seeing my beloved pets, I felt an irresistible desire to pass through the membrane. I remember crossing it, but when I was about to do so, I saw my grandfather on the other side, shaking his head negatively. Then, my aunt appeared, and my grandfather repeated the disapproving gesture. I felt a hand on my chest, pulling me back, it was my friend bringing me back. As he pulled me back toward the darkness, I heard my daughter's voice from the other side of the tunnel, calling for me, Daddy, where are you? She was calling me, and I retreated. When I emerged from the memory and returned to reality, I embraced my friend and said that I couldn't move forward at that moment. He expressed that he would make the same decision as me because he had the option to choose between leaving with his ancestors or staying. I chose to step back, guided by love and my daughter's call. It was a time when I ventured out and took risks, when I made my bets and chose tobacco, where I experienced an almost surreal sensation. Once, I woke up startled, as if I had fallen from a tree, and I found myself in bed, frightened. When I opened my eyes in my bed, I realized it was wet, soaked with water. Well, it seemed that my fever had subsided, but the bed was wet. That's how I lived a part of my life during that time, something I wouldn't have been able to do until now. My spirituality wasn't greatly affected because I already believed that my ancestors were around me. I knew I had guardians looking out for me, and my ancestors were present. That was all. What really changed was my perspective on death. I realized that death is a choice we make. It's not just something that happens, we have the power to choose. This brought some comfort, the idea of going on our own terms rather than someone simply pulling the rug from under us. Having a choice was a gift. From that point on, my gifts intensified. I could see hidden things, 
communicate with spirits, and my dreams became prophetic in an almost surreal way. I dreamt of events that would happen to close family and friends, and they unfolded within three or four days. I had to make sure to call them and share my bad dreams, hoping they could be avoided. Incredibly, before the birth of almost all my grandchildren, they would come to talk to me in dreams. I knew whether they would be boys or girls, and some even asked for names. My children were very good at this because when they had a child, they would come to me for a name, and I already had an answer, thanks to my grandchildren's requests. Furthermore, I am a remote viewer, capable of making predictions on sports events, such as soccer and basketball games. So, if a future event is on the horizon, it's more than likely that I can foresee what's to come. So, what did you think of this incredible story? Share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let's bring hope to more people that there is life beyond what the eyes can see.